Hello everyone and welcome to Around the Wickets by the Papare.com, the cricket's weekly brief that takes a summarized look at our favorite sport, cricket. Well, let's start off with Pakistan versus Sri Lanka. What a sad show by the Sri Lankans, being defeated by Pakistan after nine years in Sri Lanka and also being defeated by 10 wickets after 30 years. Now this first happened in Karachi in 1985 and now in 2015 at Gaul. Now, did we expect Sri Lanka to lose this test match, particularly after the first day was almost washed, in fact washed off, not almost, washed off. And we just had three and a half days play. And how could Sri Lanka lose after play was washed off in the first day and also in just three and a half days? I would say it was the batting. It was very bad batting on the part of Sri Lanka, where I felt that there was a sense of recklessness on the part of the batsman. Dimut Karnaratna looked good. I felt with his, um, you know, change in his technique and uh, and his uh, bat grip, he seemed to be playing with greater freedom on the offside. He looked very, very good in the second innings. But the thing about Dimut Karnaratna is, now he's been noted more as a second innings player than really scoring runs in the first innings. Kaushal Silva, lucky to be missed early on, made a good 100 in the first innings that really saved the day for Sri Lanka. And in the second innings, Lahiru Tirimana also did uh, come up with a good score. But Angelo Matthews' dismissal was a terrible one. How did Chris Gaffney give that one out? Because if you watch the split screen, it was synchronized. Where at the point where the ball appears to be hitting the bat, it had actually passed the bat. Because the synchronized picture, the split screen will show you, it was at that point that the ball appears to be emerging on the side of the forward short leg fieldsman. Which means it had gone past the batsman. So at the point of really passing the bat, there was enough daylight. And that, to me, was a massive uh, factor in the overall things when Sri Lanka lost. But other than that, well, Angelo Matthews dismissed, these things could happen. But other than that, can we be happy with the Sri Lankan batting? I wasn't happy at all. There was a sense of... Uh, uh, I, I would say there was a sense of carelessness, carelessness about Sri Lanka's batting. There was no wanting to play themselves in. Uh, Dimut Karnaratna's dismissal in the second innings when he looked well set. Kitru and Vitanage, why did he have to play that sweep shot? Even in the first innings, a soft dismissal. And then Dhammika Prasad looking to charge, Rangan Herat sweeping. Now all these happened when Safras and Asad Shafiq was building a partnership. Now did you know that Sri Lanka lost five wickets for 39 runs in both the last five wickets, that is, in both the first innings and the second innings, when the Pakistan pair was looking to pile on. Pakistan were 96 for 5 before they recovered to 417. So Sri Lanka had a massive problem and a lot of credit to Safras who combated the spin. I thought the way he took on Rangan Hera, the sweep shots he played, the way he attacked Dilwan Pereira was very good. Now that takes us to a very pertinent question by one of, the, one of our fans, Ramindu Jaya Singer. He's asking us the question, why Sri Lanka cannot close out an innings after taking the top five out. I think you're spot on. That's a huge problem that is uh, causing the Sri Lankans to think about very seriously. You dismiss the top five, but you just can't dismiss the last five. Even uh, Sulfika Baba came in and got a half century. So that problem will have to be addressed. I think the ana analysts, the coaches will have to put their thinking cap on and start looking at uh, the areas that they could try and exploit. To start with, I think they should look at attacking Safras more with pace than spin because he seemed to be comfortable against spinners, but he was not really tested against the faster bowlers on that slowish pitch. So that could be a thought. But anyway, thank you, Ravidu. That's a very fine question. So what would Sri Lanka do going into the second test match? Will they bring in uh, Suranga Lakmal for Nuan Pradeep? I like that idea. And I also like the idea of trying to bring in Jehan Mubarak for Kitruan Vitanage. You know what? Why? Because Jehan Mubarak is experienced, is matured, and he will know how to handle situations. And particularly at number six, it's a key situation. Six, seven is a key situation where you need to bat with the tail. And you've seen how Angelo Matthews bats so brilliantly with the tail. So you need somebody like that to come in specially to try and get that bottom half going for Sri Lanka. So why not Jehan Mubarak, who's in the squad and he's been brought in because he's in form, so let's use him. And also the other 
Rather disturbing news is Dilruan Pereira, who split his webbing, may not play in this second test match, which means Sri Lanka will bring in uh, inexperienced off-spinner Tarindu Kaushal, and how would, he, how would he cope with the more experienced batsmen like Misba and also the likes of Yunis Khan, who are very good against spinners, and what would the pitch at uh, the Sarah Oval look like? Now, I would have thought initially Sri Lanka would have looked at bringing in or, or making a brown strip, but with Yashir Shah getting seven wickets, they may have to abandon it, give it, give some greenness or make it a good batting pitch. Now, those are the options that the Sri Lankan think tank will have to look at. But, uh, well, that's as far as the local news, but what about India, Bangladesh? What an outstanding effort by Bangladesh. M my thinking is Bangladesh seemed to be really peaking at the right time and they seem to be doing what Sri Lanka did in 1996 and that is to do with self-confidence. Now Sri Lanka had a brilliant team then. They had a team of talented cricketers but I felt, most people felt that what they lacked was confidence and belief in their ability and Dev Watmo came in and that's exactly what he did. And you know the story, 1996 World Cup champions. I don't know whether Bangladesh could go that far, but Chandika Hathuru Singh seemed to be doing just that. He engineered a brilliant performance against Pakistan when Bangladesh swept the board, beat Pakistan, and now they have won the first two one-day internationals against a very, very strong Indian outfit. What happens if they beat India 3-0? Bangladesh will be enjoying the form of their life, form of uh, uh, what the best form they had in their cricketing history, and thus qualify for the ICC Champions Trophy in 2017. And then Rayman, the youngster, 5 for 50 and also 6 for 43. Outstanding efforts for Bangladesh and things are looking up for them. And also England, New Zealand, what an outstanding one-day series it happened to be. You started off with 400 runs for England and they did win the final game, courtesy Johnny Beasto. Now, Butler was injured. And Johnny Bairstow comes in and he immediately wins the man of the match with a swashbuckling 80 plus as England chased down a reduced target under Duckworth Lewis system. Now the good thing about England is once again the self-belief, the new thinking, innovative cricket seem to have returned to the English camp. So that's good news. I mean, you need strong teams to compete, not one-sided series. Now, you would have expected New Zealand to walk away with the one-day series, but no. Uh, after England won the first game, second third to New Zealand, the final game uh, comes uh, in uh, England's way. So 3-2 in the five-match series, and England go into a very strong Ashes battle against Australia. And I'm sure with this kind of performance, they must be all pumped up to take on the Aussies. So that's it on our weekly Around the Wicket on papare.com. Please join us every week, and uh, you can also send us your queries to hash Around the Wickets on Twitter and also on Facebook, or you can also email us at the editor at the papare.com. And I also want to remind you, we got a thing called Cricketry, which is an audio update at the end of each day's play in the Pakistan versus Sri Lanka test series. So you can join us even then and listen to our analysis at the end of each day's play, and that is Cricketry. So thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon.